Next up is our keynote speaker. Uh, he is uh, someone we've been hoping to have him talk at Sunday Assembly for a long time. Uh, this is a professor of sociology at Pitzer College. He's actually been uh, featured in a few, uh, with a few of his remarks on Sunday Assembly in recent press. Uh, he's an author of several books, including one coming out called The Secular Life, uh, and just a, a fantastic, uh, smart, funny human being. Uh, please join me in welcoming Phil Zuckerman. <laughs> A smart, funny human being. Thank you. That was awesome. Huh, what a trip. Uh, this mo I, I play soccer every Sunday morning with a bunch of guys in my neighborhood, just a pickup game, 40-year-olds and 50-year-olds, and there's always some 20-year-olds who show up. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, why are you here? Um, anyway, so I, I knew I had to be here. I knew there wouldn't be much traffic, so I went and thought, well, at least I could play a little bit. So I went up to play, and I was, I was on defense, and we were getting killed, and I kept watching the clock, and I was like, I turned to the other fullback, I, thought, I, I gotta go, I gotta go in like 10 minutes. He was like, you can't go, you can't go. I was like, I, I gotta go. And I, and I thought I could get to halftime, but I couldn't. And so I left, and, and I go, just, you know, it was downfield, and I'm like, Nigel, I gotta go. Because everybody has a Nigel on a soccer team. And I said, um, <laughs> and I said, uh, and he goes, where are you going? And then this other guy's like, where are you going? And I go, I gotta go. And some guy goes like, oh, you gotta go to church. <laughs> and I said, I said, kinda. <laughs> and then somebody else said, and he goes, what do you mean, kinda? And he goes, and then the guy, another guy yells, he goes, well, pray for me. And I turn around, I go, it's an atheist church. <laughs> and then another guy goes, then don't pray for me. And then I turn around, I said, I'll smile for you. I felt good about that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. No, um, okay, I just had that get that off my chest. Um, let me tell another quick story. Mr. Deity is here, by the way. I, now I feel know what it's like to win an Academy Award, and like Jack Nicholson is staring right at you in the front row. I'm like, wow, this is awesome. Okay. Um, so I, uh, a few years ago, I was living in Denmark. And I had been invited out for some beers with some Danish people. And my kids were little, so my wife was with them. She said, go on, have fun. So I went out drinking, and, and, and we went to various pubs, and it was wonderful. And I had only been in Denmark maybe a, a month at this point. And uh, I was to live there for two years, but I'd only been there about a month, so I didn't know it very well. I was living in the second largest city of Denmark, Aarhus. And at around 1 in the morning, it was time to head home, and I figured, okay. And I, I wish I could say it was a dark and stormy night. It wasn't. It was summertime. So it was a dark and pleasant night, and, uh, and I was going to walk back up to where our apartment was up near the university. So I was downtown, and it was a good mile, maybe two-mile walk. And it was, I don't know, you know 1 in the morning, and I'm, it was and I'm walking here, walking there. I don't really know the city, but I kind of know the general direction I need to go. I need to go uphill. So I'm walking up, and I get to a small kind of narrow street, an old cobblestone street. And I think, ah, I think that's right. So I commit to it, and I start walking up. And as I'm getting about halfway up the street, I see these long shadows up ahead. And I see some, I hear male voices, and they sound inebriated, and I'm like, oh, shit. Um, I don't know. I've had that experience in England, and it was pretty, I ended up running them. So I just thought, Ugh, guys, a bunch of guys, it's dark, it almost felt like an alley, casting long shadows. I'm five foot six and a half, and, uh, <laughs> and I'm like, so I was like, ah, oh, man, I didn't really want to walk all the way downhill and find another route, so I'm just going to have to hope, you know, I don't get beaten too badly. And, as I, and I, I can see they're up to no good, and I can see that I'm prey, you know, I'm feeling it, you know. And, and as I get closer and closer and closer, I see five or six men, young men, 19, 20, 21, 
and they're playing hopscotch. <laughs> Beer hopscotch. They've got it all set up, they're hopping around, and I'm like, thank goodness. And they asked me to join them, I passed, and I went on my merry way. What does this anecdote illustrate? Two things. Denmark is actually one of the safest countries in the world, has one of the lowest homicide rates in the world, and simultaneously is one of the most secular societies ever established in the history of the world. Thank you. I take full responsibility for that fact. Um, it was true. I lived there for two years, and I saw, I would walk through the woods at, in the middle of the night and see young women, old ladies with their dogs. No fear, a very safe, humane society, lowest rates of belief in the world, of religious belief, lowest rates of church attendance in the world. And I just think this is really important to know about. When we look, sorry, but I am a sociologist by training, so I tend to look at these kind of things. And what I found in my work is that it's, very, it's pretty easy to <clears throat> discern what are the most secular, which are the most secular societies in the world. Now some, of course, are dictatorships. There have been some pretty heinous atheist regimes in the world, still are some today. But if we look in the democratic world, democracies, the most secular of these democracies in the world are faring the best on any objective measures, almost every objective measure you could think of. Let's take three. Where's the best place in the world to be a mother? I mean, I picked that one because everybody kind of agrees on that. You know, left, right, everybody, you know, motherhood is a good thing. You should, you should do well as a mother. Well, there's a, a, an organization called Save the Children. It's a foundation, an international organization. And every year, they rank what societies on earth are the best or worst places in which to be a mother. And they take into account all kinds of factors, from health care, safety, uh, uh, how many people attend a birth, you know, how many health care people are there to, at births, uh, all kind of prenatal care, postnatal care, the whole shebang. they got 20 indicators. And every year, the 10 best places on earth in which to be a mother and have children are, among, are the 10 most secular societies on the planet. How about peace? Everybody kind of likes peace. That's something even our Republican brothers and sisters can accept, I think. Just kidding. Sorry. I'm trying to be inclusive here. Um, and uh, I love you. I love you. I love the Gipper. Okay. The point is that um, if you look at the most peaceful societies, okay, there's a, a global peace index. Every year, they take about 30 variables. They look at you know, access of, uh, accessibility to firearms, how many people are in prison, murder rates, aggravated assault rates, anything you could think of in terms of uh, what would make a society more peaceful or less peaceful, Vi rates of violence, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And every year, the 10 most peaceful societies, peace, right? We all love peace. The most secular societies on Earth. Not just Scandinavia, but Japan. Last one I'll touch on is just, you know, I hate to say it, but homicide rates. I mean, if you're going to look at one indicator of, you know, is this a good society or not, and again, you can look at all the UN statistics you want. Those societies today that have the lowest homicide rates are the most secular. In fact, we could just make a laundry list. Some of my favorites, women's rights. Where do we see progress on that front? Where do we see societies that have uh, uh, the most women in government, the most women in business at, at management level? Where do we see societies that have the best uh, reproductive rights, women's health, the most secular societies in the world? Let's take gay rights. Go back to Denmark. Denmark was the first country in the world back in the 80s to legalize marriage equality. Back in the 80s, right? Where do we see the most progress in the world, in terms of rights for gays and lesbians, the most secular societies. Women's rights, gay rights, educational attainment, health care, child care, elder care. We could go on and on and on and on. 
And I have to say, I don't want to be like, don't want to get into an argument about politics here, but there's a long and deep, a long and deep trope in our culture that there's only one path to a good society, and it's through faith. Faith in God, faith in saviors, and uh, you can, that's kind of a sociological claim. And there's a lot who say if we don't have that, society will crumble, society will fall apart, society will uh, 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 be unbearable, unlivable. The data seems to paint a very different picture. Seems to paint a very different picture. Now, anybody that's taken any social science and hopefully is sitting there listening to this, and you're already very skeptical of what I'm saying. You've got a, you've got a nail right there to drive in the coffin of my speech so far. What would that be? Anybody want to throw it out? Oh, yeah, suicide rate. Su Thank you. Say it again. OK. Correlation is not causation, right? So I can sit here and say, oh, yeah, you know, things are so great in Scandinavia, and they're the most secular societies in the world. That doesn't, that, that could just be a correlation, right? My favorite way to prove that is, did you know, to talk about this to illustrate this, did you know that educational attainment is correlated to shoe size? <laughs> it's true. It's true. Educational attainment is correlated to shoe size. People with high, bigger shoe sizes have higher educational attainment. <laughs> I know you don't believe it. Hey, look, I wear a size eight and a half. I'm, I mean, this is not benefiting me. Did you know that that's true? <laughs> How is this possible? Anybody know? Yes. That's correct. It's all about age. First graders have small feet. Bo thank you, fellow sociologist. <laughs> That's correct. So correlation is not causation. Both educational attainment and foot size are caused by a third variable, age. Could be the same thing with all this data indicating how the most secular societies today fare the best in terms of low violence rates, STD rates are the lowest, teen pregnancy rates are the lowest, educational attainment is the highest, income, uh, equality, whatever the topic, it could just be correlation. Maybe one, maybe it's actually the opposite. Maybe societies get their act together and then they become more secular because there isn't the need, the psychological need or the community need or whatnot for religion. I'm, I'm okay with that critique. I think there's some merit to it. But what is not talked about and what I want to emphasize and end on today is to suggest that it's just a correlation is missing, I think, some of the key pillars of what it means to be secular, what secular culture is predicated upon, and what secular people cherish, value, and base their lives on, even if they're not aware of it. So what are some of those things? Let's take my favorite. Democracy. A secular idea, if ever there was one. A secular idea. That shift from theocracy to democracy was a big deal. And every society today that's doing well has made that shift. Where people said, we have to govern ourselves. We can't look to anyone else or something else to make sure everything is going to be okay. We got to make it okay. So there's, number one, just democracy, which I think is a requirement for a healthy society, and it's a secular value and based on a secular worldview and secular principles. Number two, what I would call maybe a here and now-ness. I don't have the word for it. I'm sure there's one in German, but <laughs> a kind of an, a here and now-ness. Look, if you're secular, this is it. This time, this world, this life, these people. And I think that ethos actually sets the stage for a lot of societal progress, let alone personal progress. We could talk about other pillars of secular society, other values, like reason, rationalism, making decisions based on evidence, empiricism. Now there's one area, there is one area where religious culture 
tends to do a bit better. And that is strong communal bonds. And I have one answer to that, and it's two words. Sunday assembly. Woo! Thank you. Right? Smart, funny human being, right? <laughs>